Hi, welcome. So in this video, we're just going to give a little introduction to curves in three-dimensional space and talk about how we would write these as vectors and what we might do to represent a curve in three-dimensional space. So if we think about lines, if I have a line in three-dimensional space, I can think of each vector pointing to a specific point on that line, and we represent the line by the collection of all of these vectors, where each vector starts at the origin and points to a single point on the line. So really, the line is thought of as a collection of points that are the terminal points of vectors from the origin. And so each t value here, each parameter value, will give us one point on the line because it corresponds to one vector. And just to really make the connection here, let me remind you what the equation of a line is and how we do that in three-dimensional space. So if we have a line, we need a point on that line, and then we need a vector that is parallel to the line, so a vector that points in the correct direction we're looking for. And we use x0, y0, z0 to represent that point, and a, b, c to represent the parallel vector. Then we can write the equation of the line as r of t, equals the vector x of t, y of t, and z of t. So the x, y, and z components rely on that parameter t, and each t value will correspond to one point on that line. And what we end up with is x0 plus a times t in the first component, the x component, then y0 plus b times t in the y component, and z0 plus c times t in the z component. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is just that to represent a line in space, we use a vector, and that vector depends on the parameter t, and that t is just meant to get us to each individual point on the line. So rather than drawing out a surface, we're just pointing a vector to each point on the line, and it's actually going to work the same way for curves. So if we think about a curve in 3D space, I'll just draw something sort of arbitrary here. We can imagine vectors pointing to each point on this curve in the same way. So it's going to be a little more complicated to represent this curve. We're going to need something different than a line, but the same principle holds. So we're going to have a function r of t, which is equal to x of t, y of t, z of t. So it's a vector. And in each component, the x, y, and z are functions that can be all sorts of things. So rather than just having it be like x0 plus a times t, which is a linear function in that x position, we can have anything we want in the x component. So we're going to see some examples in other videos, and honestly this can get almost as complicated as you liked by putting whatever you'd want in these positions. So I'll talk more about this in another video, but we call this object, this r of t, a vector valued function. That's because it takes an input of t, and it outputs this vector. But more on that in another video. So this is just to kind of reiterate some things about lines and really get you thinking about that parameter t and how we're sort of drawing out the curve or the line in space by looking at individual vectors that point to individual points and collecting them all together as our curve or our line. I have other videos where we explore some options for these parameterized curves and where we talk more specifically about vector valued functions. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.